Mark. Mark. Met Mark. Met Mark. My verbal dyslexia must have been playing up that day because not only did I call him Matt, I also said this. Hey guys, so yeah, that was just basically a great big long time. Hey guys, so yeah. Something new today, on with the show. Okay guys, so today I am not doing the Corvette like I thought I was. I totally forgot this was coming in. But um, yeah, this is a 1974 Datsun 260Z. Nice wee car, quite, quite cute. I wonder what its horsepower is. Um, yeah, basically the stereo system. I'm installing the stereo, the Eclipse stereo that I took out of that Porsche 911, which you guys saw the other day, the little red one, uh, which is an Eclipse stereo. Don't see too many of these around these days. These are kind not rare, but Every time when you do see them, it's kind of, I suppose, special a wee bit, just because they're really, back in the day, these were like the bee's knees in stereos. They had like high voltage pre outs and uh, high quality DACs and everything, and back then that was kind of almost unheard of. Um, these were like comp almost competition level stereos. So hopefully that'll put some good sound out, but the concern I'm having is with the speakers. Um, originally when I talked to this guy, he was fine for me to put some speakers in the doors, or do whatever it was I needed to do as long as it looked tasteful, in his words, tasteful. Um, but he's spoken to Grant and Pat this morning before I got in and decided that he wants it to be OEM style. And I don't know if he knows this, but he pointed out these grills up here for the factory speakers, but that's not where they are, there's just metal behind there. The factory speakers are down here. A few moments later. That was the uh, customer. I just wanted to speak to him before I started. I think I still have to talk to him a wee bit more, but he's going to call me back. Because the reason, the thing is, these panels are like 35 years old. This one already has a great big crack in it up there, if you can see it. Big crack. Where is it? There. And I couldn't guarantee I could get these off without any further cracking or breaking. It's just a tricky one. And obviously these part panels are very hard to find in parts anywhere. He doesn't mind, I just spoke to him, he doesn't mind that the speakers would be down behind these grills, but it's just a concern as to whether or not they're gonna break as soon as I take them off. Sometimes even old panels like this, they can be sitting there for like 30 years. And then even if you don't actually, you know, physically break it yourself, sometimes just the release of pressure, like undoing a screw, is enough to make the panel just all of a sudden, um, because it's brittle, like just crack and snap and all sorts of things. Like they're, you'd never know what's going to happen with old panels. Which, and this is what one of the reasons why we are like one of the only companies in Christchurch who people will bring these sorts of cars to, because everyone else will just say no and turn them away. But we always have a go. Don't know, he's wondering about other ideas as to where we could put the speakers, but he doesn't like the idea of boxes or cutting holes in anything. So other than that, I don't know what else. Hmm, hold on a second. Oh no, that's way too big. Yolge. The 6x9 versions of these would not too bad, but we haven't got any. Wrap them in black carpet instead. Wonder if I could build a triangle panel which goes. Wonder if I could build a panel which goes like down like that. Like goes from this point to this point up to here with a speaker in it. And I could wrap it in something. This looks like genuine leather to me. I can tell by the way it's like wrinkling, whereas vinyl doesn't really wrinkle like that. It's kind of more stretchy. So this looks like actual leather. I don't think we've, we definitely don't have any actual leather, let alone black vinyl at the moment. But I could possibly build something there. The only other thing I can think of is having the speaker boxes down behind the seats here. Mm. That like have the seat for the Ford and then build, like if you imagine just a great big rectangular brick with a speaker firing up. Oh wait, this would have to be further forward as well, Jeez, there's not much room. Or I could do the same thing and just build a panel which, is, which just goes from there to there. Like it wouldn't be an enclosure, it would just be a panel which goes from that point up to that point. Okay, I think there is a bit of a plan now, guys. He's obviously a bit of a, he's a huge fan of these cars and um, 
he's obviously in like the community of people that own them and so he's found this thing online the Z store it's about the must be about all the 250 and Z's and 240 Z's and 260 Z's and stuff and there's this picture here I don't know if you can see it this is of a 240 Z with a wall across the back with 6x9's in it and that's what it would look like with a wall across here two 6x9's facing forward and then like a lid that goes across here and it'd be one piece of wood the only thing that concerns me I should have said while I was on the phone with him is that in that picture I'm pretty sure it had a space saver spear wheel but it looks to me like this car doesn't have a space saver because uh, the rear, well, I don't know if it's a space saver or what, but all I know is that this is higher than the floor, so it has to go down a wee bit as well. It has to be a very sort of, what's the word, complex shape. That's what I'm gonna try and do though. I'm gonna try and build that for him. And then the thing is it has to be removable as well. I suppose, because there's this bulge here but that there isn't on that side, so I suppose you just get the whole thing and shove it into this hole and then come around like this and it would just sort of come and stop. And whether or not you actually secure it to anything, I'm not sure. I really, I think I need to talk to Mark. I, need, I wonder if I can get him to come over. I'm going to see if I can get the upholsterer to come over. Okay, new plan, I just spoke to Mark who's potentially doing some upholstery work on this car. So he knows a lot about how they come apart and the condition of them. Um, he reckons getting these panels out won't be too hard, like he was giving them a good hard smack and they seem to take it alright. So I'm gonna have a crack at trying to get these panels off, I think. Just real carefully. We'll see what happens. And this, the thing is this area was behind there as well and we think it may not be connected properly so I need to kind of get that off anyway. So I'm gonna try and take these out. I'd like to do the speaker wall across the back, but if he prefers to have the, o the speakers in the OEM locations, I guess we'll do that. Because that was his first choice, was to have o the speakers in the OEM locations, but so if we can do that, then I will do that and we won't do the speaker wall, as cool as it would have looked. to do something decent I think I'm wondering if I could so here's the aerial oh, okay they have plugged something in what I need to know oh it looks like these are aftermarket well, let's, let's get this pink bats stuff out of here okay it looks like these speaker wires have been run later on in life they don't look original these might be the original wires, I don't know what they would have gone to. Maybe the electric aerial. Okay guys, bit of an update moving forward. Um, I haven't spoken to the customer about this yet, but it kind of fits in with the original plan that he wanted to begin with anyway, so I'm pretty sure he's gonna be happy with it. He really likes the OEM style. So, I've got the boot completely gutted. I actually managed to get both of those side panels out. Um, it wasn't as tricky as I thought it was going to be. Getting the little pops out was a bit of a bitch, although it was definitely harder than what Mark said it was. Just because uh, to get them out, I actually had to remove this panel, which is supporting the gas, the gas strut um, from it, so that the panel could come out of here. Which meant I had to support the trunk lid with my back and shoulder while I took the panel, while I undid this and took the panel out, and I had to do the same on both sides. But it's okay because I got them out now. So. Here's what I want to do. Because the customer originally wanted to go for the OEM locations, he wants it to be as factory as possible, that's what I'm going to go for over the, uh, over the rear wall. As cool as that would have been to make and, and build and how it would look, uh, I'm, going to do, I'm going to make it more OEM style so it seems factory. It's going to be basically stealth, you know, cool sound system in a 
old car that you can't really see. So, I'm gonna be putting in Rockford Fosgate R165X3, just the prime series, nice and sensitive, six and a half inch uh, speakers. And these, which is this, and that is gonna be going behind these rear ones here, like that, right? In the rear corners, which will be fine because this is the original speaker that was there, mounted on two of those points. And yeah, that's gonna fit just fine. So I'm gonna make up a panel similar to this shape to support that. And then I have had the cool idea of putting four inch speakers, the Rockford Fosgate Prime four inches, up behind these grills, right? So originally behind these grills, which is actually where he thought the speakers were to begin with, what we got is just sheet metal that has been painted black, so it's not too obvious. So what I did is um, while the panel was on here, I used my scribe and I marked the center of that uh, grill with the, just by putting it through one of the middle hole. And then I drilled out the hole with a three mil bit and tested for depth. And depth wise, there is enough depth behind here for the four inch prime speakers. So I'm thinking I'm gonna cut out a hole for the four inch speaker to go there, make a baffle for the six inch speaker to go there, use all four channels of the stereo, and that will sound, I think, a lot better than just two. The other thing I have to do is I'm going to run new speaker wires because let's face it, this is pretty ugly and nasty and not very well done, just sitting loose. Um, I need to redo this aerial because the mechanics installed it and mechanics don't really understand what on earth is. So they just sort of whacked it in there and they didn't file any of the paint or rust or anything off the surface to earth the aerial out. So I need to redo that. That was the customer. I told him about my four speaker idea and he loves it. He's stoked that I'm gonna be able to do it OEM style. So that's good. I can go ahead, new speaker wires, test the aerial, install rear speakers, well, four rear speakers really, and then the stereo, and then that'll be it. Sweet. So I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in the boot here. So I'm just gonna set the camera up in a position up top, put on a time lapse, and crack into it. Yeah. mounted six and a half inch mounted four screws in that one literally just two four uh, four millimeter bolts holding this one in she's not going anywhere very very simple mounting hoping things are gonna line up um, this one definitely isn't gonna line up directly with the grill if it was gonna line up directly directly with the grill it would have to be up higher but I can't do that because there's this thing 
this vent thing on the outside of the car. I honestly don't even know. Is that an intake or an or a, you know, like a a vent or I don't know what it is, but there's piping behind there which was hitting the magnet, so the speaker had to go lower. Um, I'm about ready to put this panel back on. I did the aerial, by the way. You saw that I at the beginning filed that off so it gets a good ground and then I also went over it with uh, some black zinc to protect it from corrosion but before I put the panel back on I'm going to put some of this foam tape around the edges of the speakers because I'm just ever so slightly concerned about the panels being really really close to the membranes and to the speakers and everything so I just want to put this stuff on there which will hopefully help pack it out a wee bit and then yeah hopefully that works hopefully things line up and hopefully the panel doesn't rest on anything. Yeah. trick putting this panel back on. It's going to be tricky. Okay. Okay guys, so pretty good news. I um, hooked the stereo up on the floor down there with a power supply and connected it to the speakers, played some, played it at some decent volume and I didn't hear any reverberation or rattling or sound of woofer hitting the panel at all. So that's good. I'm happy. I'm convinced. I'm happy that these speakers aren't coming in contact with the panel which means that I can continue on with my idea because if we did have contact then I'd probably have to revise what I'd just done. But that's good, I can continue with the right hand side now. What time is it? Ooh, I don't know if I'll get it done today. And then there's still the stereo to do. That'll happen tomorrow. Grant may or may not have some time to work on doing the stereo today. What's that on the lens? This lens always gets so dirty. So yeah, I'm just gonna chuck another time lapse on and hop, hop straight into the right hand side and try and power through it. Just get it done.
All right, guys, that's going to be it for the day. I got it all back together. The only thing I haven't put back in is the carpet. But yeah, it's all done and good. Four inches in the front, six and a halves in the back. Tested them. They're not rattling or nothing. Sounds good. Done for the day. Tomorrow is finish running the aerial and speaker wires up to the head unit location and install the head unit. I'll see you guys then. Choose to be happy and have a good one. Kakitao, mate.